Hello scholars and welcome to our science today. Yesterday or Monday we learned about the desert and forest habitats. Today we're going to learn about freshwater habitats and grasslands. So just like we did the other day, the first thing we're going to do is watch a couple videos and then I'm going to show you the two articles that you're going to be reading about before you choose whichever one was your favorite that you learned for the day and then you fill out this habitat research worksheet. So let's go ahead and get started with the fresh water habitats. Write about it. Are you ready for our pond study? You want to free Frank and Joey? They aren't pond fish, Moby. It's not the right habitat for them. Hmm, what is a habitat? A habitat is a place where plants and animals live. Habitats can be as small as a fish tank or as big as an ocean. Even a dead log can be a habitat for thousands of tiny animals. Plants and animals get everything they need from their habitats, including shelter. An ecosystem is a community of living and non-living things. All living things have relationships with other living things. Living things also need non-living things, like rocks, soil, water, or air to survive. One ecosystem can have many habitats. We're going to look at freshwater habitats, but what is freshwater? Most of Earth is covered by water, but a lot of it's salt water in the oceans. Only 1% of the world's water is freshwater, which has little salt in it. Right, Moby. Many plants and animals need fresh water. Fresh water is a natural resource, something useful from the environment. Most of Earth's fresh water is frozen or underground. But I know where to look to find fresh water around here. What are river and stream habitats like? Rivers are long bodies of moving water. Streams, creeks, springs, and brooks are smaller than rivers. The Nile River in Africa is the longest river in the world. It flows through nine countries and provides food, water, and shelter for many plants and animals. Cool! A river otter! Plants and animals that live in river habitats have special adaptations to live in their environments. A river otter has webbed feet and a strong tail that helps it swim. But it also has strong legs to help it run on land. Plants that grow in river habitats have thick, strong roots so they don't wash away. People and animals can change rivers too. Dams can control the flow of fresh water, and this can change the habitats of plants and animals. Ditches and canals are man-made waterways, and they can be habitats for many living things too. A watershed is an area where many rivers and streams flow into a larger body of water, like a lake. What are lake and pond habitats like? A lake is a body of water that is surrounded by land. Water can gather in lakes in different ways. Ice and snow can melt in the mountains and gather into rivers and streams and finally drain into lakes. Lakes are ecosystems with different habitats. Some plants and animals live on the surface of lakes, like this water strider. 
It has special legs that help it stand on top of the water. Other plants and animals live in the habitat on the lake floor, like mussels. A reservoir is a place that stores water. People build reservoirs to store fresh water for drinking. And reservoirs can provide habitats for plants and animals too. A pond is a small body of water surrounded by land. The water is pretty still and doesn't move around much. Many freshwater ponds get their water from rain. What are wetland habitats like? A wetland habitat has both land and water and often gets flooded. Swamps, bogs, and marshes are all different kinds of wetlands. <laughs> right, Moby. A wetland can be pretty muddy and damp. Many of the plants and animals that live in wetlands are endangered. This means there are few of their kind left. When wetlands are drained or filled, a lot of habitats can be destroyed. Anyway, Moby, it's time for us to visit the pond. But Frank and Joey can't come with us. It's not the right habitat for them. Hey, where'd they go? Moby. All right, so that was a lot of cool information about freshwater habitats. And after you watch that video, uh, go ahead and click on your link that will take you to this article and take a look at the different um, photos that are here in this slideshow and it gives you just a glimpse of those animals and the plants that are in freshwater habitats and then feel free to scroll down and read more information about freshwater habitats. I know it talked about some of the animals and plants above on the land and it also talked about animals and plants in the water. So be sure to read that information. Now we'll go ahead and go back to our habitat page here. And we're going to now learn about grasslands. sneaks quietly through the grass. She stalks her prey, waiting for the perfect time to bounce. Gotcha, Moby. Did you know that a cheetah's spots help it hide in its grassland habitat? It's camouflage. What are grasslands? A grassland is a large open area of land that is covered in grasses and low plants. Grasslands don't get a lot of rain during the year like forests do, so it's hard for trees to grow. But there's enough water for grasses, bushes, and shrubs. Grasses have long, thin leaves, and some can grow really, really tall. Elephants can even hide in them. Grasses are some of the toughest plants on Earth. Their roots can grow very deep into the soil to find water. This helps them survive droughts, which are long periods of time when there's very little rain. During the year, grasslands can get hot, dry, and windy. Fires happen pretty often, and they can spread easily. Fires can be dangerous, but they can be helpful, too. They burn dead plants and bring nutrients into the soil. Grasses grow back quickly because their roots stay safe deep underground. This allows animals to come back to the area. Grasses provide food for a ton of animals. And other animals rely on those animals for food. 
Grasses are an important part of the food web, which shows how living things get energy from other living things. Grasslands are on every continent except for Antarctica. The ones in North America look pretty different from the ones in Africa, and that's because the climates are different. Climate is the weather of an area over a long period of time. What are grasslands like in North America? The grasslands here are called prairies. They stretch across the middle of the United States and into parts of Canada and Mexico. Much of the Great Plains is covered by prairies. Prairies are habitats for a ton of wildlife, including coyotes, hawks, badgers, and snakes. Bison travel long distances looking for grasses to graze or eat. Pronghorns also travel in herds and graze. They're one of the fastest animals in the world. Prairies are also important habitats for birds. Birds like sparrows, meadowlarks, and warblers migrate across North America. They hunt for insects and rest in prairies during their long journeys. Hmm. The grasslands in Africa look really different from the ones here. What are grasslands like in Africa? Grasslands cover about half of Africa. That's a lot of land. The grasslands are in areas with a tropical climate, which means it's warm all year. Tropical grasslands are called savannas. Zebras, gazelles, and wildebeest all graze on the savanna. During the rainy season, the savanna can get flooded. Most plants would die or wash away, but grasses are able to survive because of their deep roots. This means animals that rely on the grasses can survive too. Every year, over two million animals migrate long distances to find new grass. Plants and animals are adapted to life here. For example, Dictics use camouflage to hide in the grass and stay safe from predators. The bee eater flies near large animals so it can snatch insects that fly up as the animals walk through the grass. A few trees do grow in the African savanna, like the acacia tree. It's covered in thorns to protect itself from animals. But the giraffe uses its long tongue to eat the leaves and avoid getting stuck. You're right, Moby. These animals are incredible. But many of them are in trouble. How are grasslands changing? Grasslands are open and have rich soil. So they're good land for farming and raising cattle. People build on the land, too. This means animals lose their habitats. The loss of grasslands means that birds and butterflies have fewer places to stop along their migrations. In some areas, cattle are overgrazing, and new grasses can no longer grow. This means it's harder for animals to find food. Today, many grassland animals are endangered, which means fewer of them are left on the planet. But people are working hard to save them. Governments are setting laws to conserve or save habitats. Scientists are finding ways to save endangered animals and help get their numbers up in the wild. We can save habitats just by learning about them and understanding our planet. All right, so that was more information about grasslands. Now, I found it interesting that the grasslands in North America and Africa are 
similar, but also very different. And they're called different names in each place. And I thought it was important for them to mention that last part in the video about the grasslands being destroyed sometimes by humans or by the overherding of cows eating the grass. And Annie made a good point that we need to continue to learn about how we can save these animals' habitats and learn more about our world, which will help keep all these animals and their land safe. Now, after the video, go ahead and read the article here about grassland habitats. Again, you have a slideshow where you can scroll through and look at the different plants and animals in grasslands, and then read more information down below about grasslands. Now, after you listen to both videos and read both of the articles, choose whichever habitat you enjoyed learning the most, and you're going to fill out your habitat research. Again, double click these blue boxes and then type the name of the habitat at the top. Talk about the climate and weather, the animals found there, plants found there, where the habitat is located, if you're able to find it, or any interesting facts that you learned. Tomorrow, we'll learn about our last two habitats, and then I will explain what our project is going to be next week. So, until then, I will see you guys next time.